forecast today was from wind, rain, but right now it's a beautiful carp fisher's dawn. Mist coming off the lake. It's funny about Norfolk, the weather can be so changeable. 20, 30 miles, there can be so much difference. Oh, there's loads of these black sheep. I wonder if this one's gonna move. <laughs> Morning. No, he isn't. Yes, he is. Right, as we come up to the tree... Nah. I think I'm going to walk very quietly here and get behind this tree. Right, let's put the gear down as quietly and as slowly as possible. This is the sort of thing that ruins the fishing in two seconds flat if you're not quiet. The trouble is, everything I carry rattles, all the rods held together, and a box of bait and and the stool. It really is so important. Careful, Wilson. Don't clonk the bag. God dear me. Something creak there. Hello, there's five mallards there. I hope they're not going to be on my baits when I put them out. What a beautiful scene. There's stacks of bubbles all over the place. Absolutely looks like a witch's cauldron. Carp must have been going balmy during the night. Magic. Right, let's see if we can get in close here. I'll have to be really, really quiet. Any tiny little bump could affect the fishing. Right, let's put the stool up. They're noisy things, stools. but I do like to be comfortable when I'm fishing. Yes, there's a few fish moving in close here. I can see one or two tail puttons. Right, I think I'm going to start with some float tackle. I've got a small peacock quill here, fixed bottom end only. And on the size eight hook, I've got a couple of cockles. Lovely spot this is. The surface is absolutely alive with midges. So peaceful. It's the magic of carp fishing. All summer fishing, really, early in the morning. Hello, I thought there was a little tiny knock on that float then. It could have been a small fish brushing against the line. Yo! Yo, Bennett should never have missed that. What a sit -up. Well, there's obviously some fish moving through. Let's put out another couple of cockles. I love using my centre pin for these close-in stints along the margins. It's such a, an effective way of fishing. But you haven't got to cast very far. There's two fingers and it's out. It's so shallow here, it's about 20 inches deep. Amazes me how the carp move through without ever displacing any of the water. The only indication that there is just the odd bubble coming up. I think the bottom's a bit harder here, whereas out in the middle of the lake it's a bit softer and they, they tend to root that up quite a bit, but here they, you don't see so many bubbles coming up. Oh, yes, here we are. Oh, oh that's a good fish. Oh. <laughs> Come on, mate. Oh. Oh. Let's try these shallows. Oh, can't do anything about it. They're just they're careering off. It's so shallow there, it's on a... It's on a mud bed. Ah. Come on. Oh, oh I've got rod stuck in the tree then. 
Oh, it's so shallow there. Fish almost become grounded. Come on. Oh, it's nearly ready. Come on. Oh, no, it isn't. It's going to make it an up run. <laughs> it's not that big, really. It's got immense power. Come on. Ah. Oh, it isn't having any. Come on. No. Oh, 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 gotcha. Oh, dear, oh, that's so shallow, then. Caught in a branch. Oh, what a lovely fish to start the day. A lovely long plated mirror. About seven pounds. The sun will keep with the forceps. Super fish. Oh, lovely looking creature, that. Beautiful. Let's put him back straight away. Goodness me, this is shallow. No wonder that fish got grounded when I netted it. There you are. Where you go. Oh. Lovely. This lake may not look particularly rich in food, like a lot of lakes with lilies and weeds showing, etc. But down here on the bottom, it's very, very rich. In fact, one of my favourite baits you can usually find in spots like these in quite shallow water where it's muddy like it is here. And that's the freshwater mussel, the swan mussel. They're a super bait for carp. See if we can find a few. They live in the mud. And, ah, there's one. Uh, one more, if I can find one. Oh, there we are. All right, these are going to be a good bait for under those trees. We'll have a go with a stalking rod on the free line later on. This should be enough. This is how to use swan mussels. You must open them first of all. Put a knife into the... in between the shells and sever the mussels at each end that hold the shells because otherwise you can split your finger. There we are. That was it. reveals the nice soft orangey inside. That's our bait. Some people use the whole thing connected. Some people use these bits or sling them in for ground bait. And then the mussel itself, this lovely big orangey bit, goes on a number four hook. Just like that. It's a super carp bait. They love them. Oh, the surface here is absolutely alive with midges. Millions of them. And of course, down below on the bottom in the mud is their larvae, the, the bloodworm. It's obviously the most important food in this lake that the carp eat, and it's probably the most important food um, for most freshwater species. But there are other forms of life in here. Let's have a dip with the net, see what we can find. I like doing this, it reminds me of my days as a kid. My dad always had much longer arms than me, and he seemed to be able to reach in all the dark places and pull out bigger sticklebacks. What have we got? Oh. <laughs> Phew, look at this. We've got a real mixed grill here. We've got thousands of water boatmen, Corixas, little jumping ones. We've got about a dozen of this year's fry, all about an inch long. You can actually see what they are. That's a. That's going to be a mirror carp. Oh, and there's a true leather. That one hasn't got a scale on it at all. Completely. Look at that. Isn't that 
beautiful. And then we've got a, just the... the ordinary plain scale common carp. They really are beautiful. Right, I'm going to have to keep well away from this dam here because the, the fish move in very, very close and move along the wall and then under the branches of this big tree next to the boathouse. The ripple's still quite strong. Right, let's get quietly in position here. Extend the net a little. Oh, that's better. Right, let's put in a few peanuts. And a couple of cubes of lunch in me. That's quite nice. Just push the float up a little for this. That's about right. I'll put a single peanut on. This is how I like to hook on these American peanuts. Right through the end. Just like that. Leaving the entire hook proud. We'll sink the line because of that, that ripple. And I think I'll keep the rod tip sunk here, otherwise I'm going to have a lot of problems, particularly if some of the bites prove to be a bit finicky. Yeah, that's fine. So begins the waiting game. Sitting here watching a float carp fishing is something I've been doing oh, for over 30 years now, since I was 10 years old. I think I caught my first carp like it and, and I should probably catch my last. It's a lovely way of fishing. Although, of course, in the 50s, ledgering for carp with special baits was something that was devised by the late Richard Walker. Uh, and it brought about a whole new attitude towards carp fishing. People thought a lot about, much more about them, thought about the baits, thought about the rigs. And of course, tackle now has, has changed dramatically from built cane rods over to carbon rods and boron rods. What's coming next, I don't know. One thing's for sure, carp still fight as much as they used to. And you can still catch them in the same basic ways before all the evolution in carp fishing started. They are, after all, just an ordinary fish, providing you're quiet and you put a bait in the right place at the right time and they're not suspicious of you, you'll normally get bites. Hello, I think I had a twitch then. Could have been a tail hitting the line. I don't know, though. Yes, here we are. Oh! God! This is a nice fish. Oh, I'm trying to get underneath those roots. Oh! Be careful of this. God, he's trying to get under my own bank now. Oh. Come on. Come on. No. Go. Goodness me, it is keeping down. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, come on. Ugh. Funny these, sometimes you come close in and they don't realise they're hooked. Just keep thumping around. It's actually <laughs> coming, coming towards me. Come on. Oh, yes. Well, that's a nice one. Oh. Looks like a 
fully scale mirror. Come on. Oh, lovely. Ooh. <laughs> yes, it is. It's a lovely, fully scale mirror. Oh, a pretty fish. I think I'll unhook this with the forceps. There we are. Beautiful fish, these fully scale mirrors. In fact, this lake is rather unusual in that it breeds an awful lot of them. It's super fish. Absolutely super. This might only be small, this one, six or seven pounds, but it's a wonderful looking creature. I think they're one of my favourite types of carp, these. Well, that swim's gone dead. So I think I'm going to try this long run by the, by the sedges here where I pre-baited earlier on. Oh, there's a lovely big patch of willow herb here. It's my favourite wildflower, super colour. Here we are, here's the swim. Ooh. Yes, there's a lovely close run here that I can cover with the centre pin and float tackle. Only about three yards out. And then I'll put a, a ledger with a shot rig out on a buzzer about 20 yards where I'll put the nuts. While it's out in my hand, let's have a look at my short link shot rig. There's an ounce and a half bomb on a two inch link tied to the bottom of a size 10 swivel. And on the top is tied the real line and the hook link, which is only four inches. That's in case, should the swivel break in the middle, you're still connected to the fish. And it works like this. Everything's tight to the rod, or almost tight. Along comes a carp, sucks up the bait, goes to move off, moves the lead, feels the, the point of the hook, and does a runner, and the hook goes home. Secret of shot rigs, of course, is to have a needle sharp hook, and that one's very sharp. All right, put it on the buzzer. As I've only got six pound line, I'm fishing with the bail arm closed, but the end to reverse off, so that as soon as a fish picks this up and makes off, the reel will actually churn. Sometimes if I'm fishing with heavier line, I might even, buzzer's fine, fish with heavier line, but in this instance, the line could snap on a very fast take, so I've left the end to reverse off. Right, let's get the float rod out. I've swapped over to a cockle again here. There we are, that's just two yards out from those sedges. It's surprising, really, how close those fish will come in. Hello, I think my... Hello, here we are. Oh, oh, we're away here on the shot rig, right out in the middle. Goodness me, that was quick. Oh, I've got to try and stop that getting to those rushes here. Oh, I've just turned it. It's heading out towards the middle again. I was just about to cast out another cockle on the float rig, and up she went. This is a very good fish by the look of it. Very good fish. I have to be careful with this one. Oh, it's heading right out into the middle of the lake. Now it's coming in again. Goodness me, it's a flyer. Oh! Oh, I've got the hooks come out. I've got line everywhere. I'm up in the tree. <laughs> oh, well. <coughs> so it goes. Over this style quietly. I don't like styles close to the lake. is the swim I fancy where I put in a few floaters a little while back and actually I just saw one come up there. Here we are. Of course, a lovely umbrella under here. I like a nice Bit of tough corner crust, stays on ever so well.
This is how my little temping controller float works. It slides on the line above a small bead and a junction swivel. The bead's there so that the float doesn't jam against the hook link swivel. And the hook link's two or three feet long with the crust or cat food biscuit or whatever. And the float's constructed from a basic balsa body with a cane stem through it. And then there's lead wire wrapped around that so that it sits in the water, cocked at about the red. And the red you can see for all oh, up to 60, 70 yards. It's a super little float for fishing floaters because when you get a bite, the line runs straight the way through it uh, and the carp feels very little resistance. Although if it dives deep, then sometimes the float actually goes under, although it's, it's not meant to. It's just supposed to get, get you out there in a light way for a nice sensitive presentation. Oh, beautiful. Nearly in the rhododendrons. It's just right. The nice thing about floater fishing is that expectancy. You're continually aware that any second up could come a big pair of lips and down goes the boat. I don't know, there's a duck there just emerging from the rhododendrons. I hope it's not going to take the crusts. I saw a moorhen pick up a few a few minutes ago. Here we are, we're in. Oh, God, goodness me, that came quickly. God. Oh, I can't put any more pressure on this rod. The line's only six, and it's about a pound and a quarter test curve. But it does bend rather nicely. I can't put any more side strain on, because I've got a branch there. This isn't the easiest place to fish from underneath this tree. Well, let's get a net ready. Well, I don't really think it's quite ready yet. Come on. No, it's... Come on. <laughs> no, I must be patient. Not one of my greatest virtues. Oh, it's off again. That's a nice fish. Watch it very strong. Come on. No, no, no. <laughs> you little devil. God. God, it's... God. Dear me, these have got unbelievable power. Oh. Did a swimmer's roll, eh? Come on. No, uh, still not having it. That's nearly ready. Come on. No, uh, still not having it. Oh. Yes, I think it is. Oh. Oh, God dear me. Oh, beautiful. Oh, it's a, it's a lovely, fully scale mirror. Oh. Oh. First fish on crust. Oh, look at that. There's the hook. Oh, it's come out in the net. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, and a lovely big, fully scale mirror. It's got a mark on its belly there, looks like an old spawning abrasion. It's well healed though, that's a super thing. Look at that tail! Goodness me. I think that's my biggest fully scaled mirror ever, actually. Oh, it's a lovely creature. Oh, <laughs> tremendous. Enormous great barbels it's got. Beautiful. What a super fish to end this series with. So it's goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from her. Absolute magic. Mm -hmm.